Uh, this is Judith Reedy. I'm going to be doing a painting de demo. Actually, I'm doing it right now and talking about it. In the upper right hand corner, I have a photograph of uh, a local lake in my state, Wisconsin, and the sunset uh, looking due west. And uh, I'm using that as the image from which I am going to base this painting. As you can check also on the below that colored image, I have a, the same image changed into grayscale. Now, you're probably wondering, since I talked to you all about putting the lights and darks in, uh, and put in some cases all the darks in first. In this case, I looked at the proportion of darks and the proportion of lights, and I realized that uh, there was really a large light section in the painting that needed to be placed in as an underpainting. This is acrylic, by the way. And so I uh, decided to do an, uh, uh, like the sky. It's gradated from dark to light. I tried to keep the strokes relatively easy, even. I was actually looking for my larger brush, which somehow must have gotten uh, moved, but I can still paint with this brush. It's fairly good size. Now I'm going to start adding some of the color that I see in the sky, but just suggesting it. Um, and then I will be putting in some of the darks. But as you can see, I'm there's sort of an orange uh, this is a CAD. Uh, before I was using a ultra, a, a phthalo, excuse me, a phthalo blue, um, with a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit of uh, or a uh, CAD orange, just the slightest bit to tone it down, so it wasn't quite as, and with the tiniest bit of white. And now I'm putting CAD red light and sort of staining the canvas um, with that back color. And uh, I'm doing that because that's what I see as in the sky in the background. But I'm just um, doing that very transparently in order to let the, the light of the canvas, the white of the canvas come through. I'm hoping that will make for greater glow. Now I'm kind of with a little bit of charcoal, I'm drawing in the basic shapes. I did do a sketch, which you can barely see, uh, that's right to the right of the uh, of the canvas. I did that full size of the shape uh, based on on the shapes, the dark and white shapes that I did with charcoal and now just looking at that to the side I'm kind of sketching this in. It's not to me that crucial that if I get it perfect like you would in a portrait because this is just a suggestion. Okay so now I kind of mapped out the shapes in a linear way. Now I'm going to take the dark shapes and put them in uh, more uh, with paint. And in this case, I'm using a combination of phthalo uh, blue and cad red light, which are, in a sense, opposites because the cad red light is almost uh, an orange, which would be an opposite of blue, which would neutralize that and reduce some of the intensity. I even added a little bit of yellow to that to make it even darker. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you can use that almost as a black. So uh, now I'm putting in the shadow in the of the trees in the water. I'm just sort of suggesting it. Uh, then there's a. This was sort of a, a peninsula that was coming out into the lake, but beyond that there was a a land mass on the other side with the trees that was really being deeply affected by the orange in the sky. So I have a little bit more of the cad red in that color. You know, the funny thing about sunsets is they break some of the rules. Like sometimes uh, we often say that 
things in the distance become more muted. But actually in a sunset, it's almost sometimes the complete opposite. So anyway, as I'm going, now I'm putting in some of the clouds, and there I'm using a, 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 a phthalo with a little bit more white in it, and it has a little bit of uh, cad red and a little of le lizard crimson in that area. I really could have used a larger brush. It probably could have worked a little faster. I'm also trying to keep my strokes uh, vertical and to go with the form that I'm painting. To keep them in the same direction, not just every direction, but kind of trying to keep them and uh, sometimes I'll rub it out a little bit and smooth it out with a, a paper towel. Now I'm putting in the shadow in the water because the water is pretty dark as you can see from the photos both the grayscale and the colored photo and uh, I'm working on on that area But I really try to keep my strokes uh, I'm working on the foreground uh, water areas with the shadows. Now the sky, the same kind of phthalo blue, but it's not a pure phthalo blue. I added a little cad red orange light, cad red light, to uh, reduce the intensity of that cloud area softening the edges of the cloud. I'm just beginning to develop the basic shapes. This is what I'm doing right now. It's very much the basic shapes that I'm putting in. And I see in here uh, basically one, two, three values, pretty much. I'd say there's three values. Now I'm adding some, making I lost some of the light which I wanted to increase so that's the beauty of acrylic is that you can go over it so quickly and uh, articulate the shapes uh, that uh, are occurring in that sky. I'm kind of playing around with seeing the colors. I'm actually finding though that as I've done this um, going back in the white and then going over it with whatever color I want gives a little bit more luminosity than when I just go straight with the color. It's not quite as brilliant. And uh, part of the starkness of the sunset is that issue. But I feel like I'm leaning towards the drama that I sense in that sunset a little bit more. Um, I'm probably going to be working more on the sky and getting it a little lighter. It's amazing. You think you have the value correct and then you get something else next to it and you realize that it's not as bright as you imagined. So, anyway, that's kind of, I want to get that hints of pink that are in the clouds in there, wipe it out, put it in there. I'll end up very lightly going over this, but this is sort of the preliminary stage. I'm no longer at just putting in the basic shapes. I'm doing a little bit more of detailing and subtlety of color because the shapes aren't entirely 
all solid blue. The sky, for example, has um, that big blue cloud at the base, but it, it's actually not a solid blue. There's some variation in the blue itself, which I haven't really determined yet, but I have in my mind that I'm going to determine. Um, I'm still working on the shapes. I think I need to develop a little more of the lights in the sky, but I'm working, and I and I think that even though this there's a in the foreground, I have a reflection of the sky light. It is not quite as bright as the light in uh, as as the um, as the sky itself. So sometimes you make it a little brighter and then you go back and you work it kind of back and forth and tone it down. Um, there's this little stre streak of pink close up that um, that is there. I think we're doing a good job here. Okay. I'm getting it a little darker working on that. I think even uh, there's going to be a need for more adjustments uh, in the water. You know, with our current virus situation, I always I'm a little I'm a little sad because I love the summer and I love swimming and I love being on the lake and. I'm hoping that we'll be able to go back to our lakes and beaches and by then, but who knows. I do think, though, I'm going to have to work on the sky a little bit more and the, I think I'm going to need to work on that shadow in the trees of the trees in the, in the lake. Ah, there we got it. A little bit more. Worked on that this this afternoon. Now I'm over covering it over a little bit more with a uh, mixture of uh, phthalo blue and a little bit more white. Phthalo blue is really beautiful. It actually gets brighter when you uh, add a little white to it. And gets more uh, more intense, which is a little different than some of the other colors. If you add white, they they tend to um, lose some of their luminosity. But phthalo blue actually becomes a little more intense when you do that. And I think I like that kind of contrast of the luminosity. And I'm adding a little bit of purple now which I'm creating with ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, which I'm putting over certain areas.
and the foreground definitely I need to reduce the intensity of that green. Uh, I think I'm going to work a little bit more in the sky though for now and the edges of the clouds and the brightness I think I need a little bit more of that in. good coming along some of my most favorite I just love skies I don't know what it is about skies they just seem so expansive to me but now I'm just in a general sense giving it a little bit more light and I will be refining that in the next video I hope that you have enjoyed this and seen my process if the area had had more dark I would have covered the whole area with dark, but because I had so much light, I started with the light and overpainted it with the dark. You have to sometimes make judgments like that. So anyway, this isn't quite done, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe, and if you want to get more of the videos or have any comments, first subscribe, like it, and then make comments and look forward to the next vid finishing video. Take care, Judith. Bye.